folks, Jillian Pocalo here to show you today how to do the screen filler and drawing fluid method using Speedball's lines of products. So um, today what I what you're gonna get is, well, today what you want to get is a box that looks like this and it comes with two things inside of it, which is the screen uh, drawing fluid. It's this beautiful blue color. And then you've got the screen filler, which comes in this beautiful, actually this is my favorite color in the world, this russet red color. Um, so I wanna show you kind of like step-by-step step how to do the process. Um, and just know that this is one of those things where you're gonna need to kind of wait for stuff to dry. Um, but this is a really great method if you're trying to do screen printing and you don't feel like going through the hassle of doing a photo silk screen. Um, so let me just kind of show you what your options are with screen printing. So of course you can always make a paper stencil, um, a cut paper stencil, that's one method to getting um, a, a print out into the world. Uh, then there's the screen filler drawing fluid method, which is what I'm gonna show you today. And then um, I'll use a lot of photo silk screens in my work. Um, but you know, this is a whole process and there's another video for that and I encourage you to check that one out. But, um, but so this is, this is kind of the steps of what we're gonna do today. So first you're gonna start with your screen drawing fluid, which is that blue, the blue stuff. Then you're gonna cover it with the screen filler and I'll give you some helpful hints to that, uh, for that in a moment. And then you're going to eventually wash out and, um, and you'll be able to screen print from, from the screen that you, you've developed. So uh, let's get started, shall we? So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start with an, a blank screen. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I really love um, using, uh, like buying my mesh separately and then popping old mesh off and putting a new mesh on um, so that that way I'm able to conserve space. Um, but you know, any, any screen mesh is gonna do. Um, I think this is like 150, mesh thread count, which means that that's how many threads per inch there are, and so, you know, like, you, you count how many threads there are per inch. Um, this is kind of like a, a perfect for any purpose. Uh, for this project, you, you kind of want to have, like, you don't want a really, really fine uh, mesh. So mesh can go up to, like, 250, 280, um, 300, but, but the finer the mesh, you're not necessarily going to get that much more detail out of that. I use the finer mesh stuff for my, my photographs um, if I'm trying to get like a really nice range of um, like gray tones or whatever, um, or half tones, I should say. So anyway, so I have a blank screen and I have my image that I'm going to work with. And so I can do this in any number of ways. And you're an artist, you can figure this out to see what works best for you. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put it down like this. I have, uh, so when I'm screen printing, I have like two sides, right? There's the dish side where the screen is on the bottom. And then there's the edge of the, um, the balusters where, or there's what I like to call the drum side, which is where, you know, the screen is up on top. So I'm gonna look at it like the drum side. And um, because I don't want my mesh to be directly touching my image. In other words, like when I start painting with this stuff, it's gonna bleed right through. Another way you can do this is if you want to keep it closer, you can um, just take the cap of your drawing fluid and just sort of lay it underneath the baluster like that so that it's just slightly above so it's not really touching the table. In fact, that's how I'm gonna do this. So, um, I'm just gonna start to paint the areas of my stencil. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint. And what's nice is that this, you don't really need a really thick coat of this. Um, you just wanna kinda keep it moving around as best you can. What this is going to do is this is going to um, repel the screen filler. So what's what's nice is this is like a very direct process. What you see here is pretty much what you're gonna get. A couple of years ago, um, I was doing a project like this with my, my fourth graders at my school and um, I had them do WPA post inspired posters. 
and so they were looking at um, how, you know, the messaging behind the WPA posters um, and some of their interpretations were absolutely hilarious. One kid did a piece that said, um, like his motivational poster was, um, work and get money. <laughs> and there's another kid who wrote, um, owls are awesome. And they are, of course, but um, it was just really interesting. So you can see how I've painted it. It's not terribly thick. I don't even need to paint the other side. I just wanna paint one side. Um, there might be a couple of pinholes there so you can kind of touch that up if you see any. And when I say pinholes, I'm talking about like areas where maybe there's a bubble because I was painting rather quickly and I just wanna kind of go over those because those might actually wind up being like little spots in when I, when I uh, add the screen filler. Okay, now um, you there are a lot of ways that you can also apply um, this. So, you know, if I wanted to, I could take a block that I've carved and I could always just sort of put the drawing fluid over top and then I can stamp it onto my screen. You can probably get a pretty interesting thing that I can use. Um, I've seen some people water down the drawing fluid and um, create sort of a misty effect. Um, keep in mind if it's really light, you know, the, the screen only knows how to read open or closed. It doesn't know how to read like really subtle changes in tone. So um, so you're, you're gonna get pretty much either a black or a white depending on uh, where where the screen filler is able to fill in. So at this point, you're going to just let your screen dry. And so I have one that I've been working on drying for a little while. So this is one that I've been working on. Um, and I stuck it in front of the fan a while ago and it's almost ready to go. I mean, there's some spots you can see there's some little goopy spots that it's a little bit thick. Um, honestly, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna go for it and we'll see what we get. Um, all mistakes are fixable, so I could always change stuff later if I wanted to. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape off my screen now. Before I apply the screen filler, I want to make sure that I've got a good foundation so I'm not going to get it every, the screen filler everywhere because the screen filler is kind of liquidy. So I'm just going to tape where I want my image area to end. So I'm just using some you know, blue painter's tape so it comes off really easily. Um, it sort of matters what side you do this on. I painted on this side, so I'm going to put my screen filler on on this side. Um, so that's why I'm choosing to do it this way. If I painted the other side, I would do my screen filler on the other side. But because this is the side that's got most of the um, drawing fluid, I'm going to use this side. Now you may be looking at this and you may see that there's this drip here, right? And that was formed by um, me trying to rush dry my screen. So what you can do is if you have a mistake that you want to fix, just take a little bit of water and you can just kind of wash it right out. Now the screen drawing fluid, the whole point is that it washes out. So you can fix mistakes this way really easily. All mistakes are fixable. And you just wanna give that a moment or two to dry so that you're not putting screen filler on a really wet surface, but there we go. Fun stuff. All right, so I'm just going to tape up the rest of this while I let that sort of chillax and dry.
doing this method, um, you're going to have a stencil that's going to last a while, which is really, really nice, right? So, um, but if you decided that you wanted to reclaim this screen at the very end, um, you can use either the stuff called Greased Lightning, which is a cleaner, or Speedball has made it super easy because they have a Speedy Clean, which takes the, um, takes the screen filler right off. All right, so I'm kind of letting that dry a little bit. I don't like to wait. We're going to go for it. So you can apply screen filler in really any way that works best for you. I'm going to use an emulsion coater. Um, because I think that it's a lot easier and I want to try and do this in one nice clean pass. I also have um, I also have an old gift card just in case so I can clean up anything if it gets really drippy. Um, you can also use a squeegee for this process. Ultimately you just want to kind of not go back and forth and you want to do only one coat. So. When you get your screen filler, the screen filler part is, it's a, like, it's almost like thick pigment and it settles to the bottom of the jar. So you want to stir it up really well. Um, you don't want to shake because those little bubbles will rise to the surface. And if they get on the surface of your screen, then they tend to make little tiny pinholes all over your screen. And then that's a real bummer because then you have to fix that. So it's a lot easier if you just stir it up it's that gorgeous gorgeous color I have to say I absolutely love the way that the screen looks once the screen filler is in place because the this red and the blue just oh it's my favorite color combination all right so you can see it's really kind of liquidy so I'm going to try and do this in one nice pass as kindly as I can All right, so at this point, you're gonna to wanna to let this sit and you're gonna to wanna to let this dry for a while. Um, probably, I mean, it's an acrylic base, I'm assuming, so it's gonna take a few minutes. So I'm gonna stick this in front of the fan and um, we'll let that go. Now, if that was, if we were not live, I would totally show you the washing out process because there is an ooh and an ah factor that's really cool. Um, but since we are live, let me show you something and we'll see if that's able to dry in the time that I'm showing you this other thing. So I have this screen and I'm not gonna use that. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna just show you how to pull a screen print um, as though the whole process was finished and just so that you can kind of see where the ink goes and where the ink does not go. So I have this screen, this is a photo screen, but it's basically the same idea as what I, what I have on the, in front of the fan right now. Where the screen is blocked, ink can't go through where the screen is open, where you can see my finger, that's where the ink can pass through. So all I need to do is put down my screen on top of a piece of paper. I've got my piece of paper down here, I've got my screen. And what color should we print in? You know what, let's use Let's use this. So I'm going to use my Speedball Professional Black, Poster Black. It's a beautiful color black. It's almost like midnight once it's dry. And I'm going to grab a squeegee. Squeegees come in all different shapes and sizes. I'm choosing to use this one because when I go from side to side, like when I go like this, I'm able to get this in one clean pass. Um, different squeegees, you know, like if you're using a really big screen, you want to try and get a squeegee that's able to go across the screen in one um, fell swoop. 
And what I'll usually do is develop as many images on each screen mesh as I possibly can. Um, so this is a 12 by 16 frame and the frames are measured on the inside. So the actual image size that I have to work with is 12 by 16. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll usually fit two eight and a half by 11s on one 12 by 16 uh, screen. Um, but they also come in slightly smaller size. So I think this is a 10 by 14. And so no matter what, you're gonna lose a little bit of image area because you don't wanna have your image go right up to the edge. Um, the ink's just not gonna get into all of those little recessed areas. So no matter what, like this is really close to the edge. I wouldn't go any closer than that. Um, so like this'll fit one eight and a half by 11 really nicely. So it's really great if you're trying to do t-shirts, for instance, and you have a screen that's this size. Um, so that way you can just, you know, print from the same, print the same t-shirt over and over again um, easily without having to take the time to register and get it right. Okay, so I have my ink, my special scoop, and I'm going to just put a nice amount of ink across the top of the image. And then I'm gonna hold my squeegee at a 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna try and pull this ink across in one or two passes. You just don't wanna go back and forth a whole lot because then sometimes what can happen is the ink is like, like every time that you're, you're doing that, the screen is sort of touching the paper and lifting off. So you might get some smudges. Um, so you wanna try and do it in one pass if possible. And I have a screen print. So um, there's one cardinal rule about printmaking, which is that you don't wanna let your uh, ink dry on your screen, but any other thing is, is totally fine. And let's go see how my, my other screen is doing. All right, so my screen filler, actually, wow. This is almost dry to the touch. It's a little cool. So I don't know if I fully trust it, but it's, you know what? But it looks like it's pretty, looks like it's pretty closed. Um, let's try it. We'll see. All right, so first what I have to do is I have to take out my screen drawing fluid. So I'm gonna just sort of gently go over this. And I want you to see the aha moment of when you actually know that you've made a good stencil. So I'm just gonna take this water And you can see how easily it's removing. Now I know the question's gonna come up. Jillian, why are you using a fan instead of a hair dryer? If you have hair like mine, you have no business having a hair dryer. Or at least I don't ever use a hair dryer. So I, that is one tool in my studio that I don't have. Um, but I do have a fan and I do have the natural airflow, so that kind of works for me. All right, so right back down. And I want to show you a little more. It's coming out very easily, which is great. You could also use um, like a spray bottle to get it out. You could also take this over to the sink and wash it out. I'm just trying to avoid having to wait for this long, for a longer period of time. Okay. So. You can see light passing through, and where you can see my hand, 
that is where the ink can pass through as well. So that's kind of one of these really neat things about this process. It's really quite fast. I'm going to just stick this in front of my fan one more time and see if I can pull a print from this pattern. Now, I've been letting this one sit for a couple of minutes, um, but what you can always do is you can just kind of spray down to keep it wet, and then uh, when I have a chance to actually rinse it out, I will be able to do so without much problem. Like I, don't, I just don't want the ink to dry on the screen. So I'll just kind of spray that down a little. Now all of this stuff is non-toxic. Um, my studio is in my home, so everything that I bring into my studio has to be uh, non-toxic and preferably water-based because I'm washing it out in sinks and stuff in my house. So what, what I really like about this whole product line is that there's no smell. So it's my, you know, it, it's, it's nice to be able to work with all water-based, water-soluble um, stuff that I don't have to worry about, you know, making me sick. All right, let's go check on our, our screen again. It's a little wet, but I think I can probably pull a halfway decent print from it. Now, if I felt like making you folks wait, I would wash out the rest of this, right? And then, you know, we would be able to see all of the stencils print. But I don't want to keep you waiting. And so again, you know, this is, this is the, um, the method that I'm using, which is the drawing fluid and screen filler method for making stencils. And, um, and it's by Spiegel. All right, so here we go. You folks are here to see this first. So I, I, what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm not trying to print my whole screen, I'm just trying to print just this image. So I have all the other sides taped up. When I have other stuff on a screen like this, I'll sort of tape around it gently um, so that I don't get ink where I don't want it. Here we go. And my six inch squeegee is gonna be just a little bit big, but that's okay. Rotate the paper this way. So the reason I'm rotating my paper and my screen is because you wanna try and, I mean, you can, here's the thing, all artists are different, right? So some people will make prints going side to side but you have a lot more power if you're pulling the ink towards you. So it's a lot easier to pull uh, towards you. So just to show you, I'm gonna do use my, my poster black. What's really nice about this stuff is it's designed to um, not scuff. So if you're like me and you have only so much studio space and you really don't have a choice but to occasionally allow some of your work to stack on top of the other. Like I, I can do that without having to worry that the blacks are gonna get scuffed up. So, um, so these are some works in process, um, but you know, I, I really don't have a choice but to have them stacked at the moment. Anyway, so it's one of the nice things about this, this poster black. This is not designed for, this is not designed for um, clothing just so you know, that's just for paper. But Speedball makes a line of inks that are designed for paper and panel, and then there, there's also a line of uh, inks that are designed for fabric. And um, you can use fabric inks on paper, but you cannot use paper inks on fabric or they'll wash out over time, okay? And here we go. You just saw it here first, folks. So um, one of the things that I just want to make you note 
is that there is some what I call scummy stuff right now and that's really because I was being impatient and didn't want to wait although as far as a distressed look it really does kind of look nice um, but so yeah so this is the screen filler drawing fluid method all of the steps these are all of the steps that we did today so we started with the drawing fluid we then did the drawing fluid with the screen filler let that dry completely and then uh, we washed it out and we're left with a stencil that you can print from again and again and again and again and again I mean if you're the it, there's there's something for everybody here so if you're the type of person who likes to reclaim your screen you know after you wash this out and um, and you're just left with your stencil and you want to reclaim your screen you can use the speedy clean and you'll just paint both sides of your screen wait a few minutes scrub it down and you'll start to see it release and then you can just hit it with some water and it'll poof, wash away um, or uh, you can also um, do like I do where I'm gonna make this um, I made this screen and I'm gonna keep using it until I feel like I'm done using it and then I'll just put it in my flat file with all the rest of my screens and pull it out when I want to so um, and and then restretch my screen and I'll be ready to go so thanks so much for tuning in, folks. I hope you have a great time, uh, and maybe this weekend you can treat yourself to some studio time and make some cool stuff. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.